So here we go then, the long-awaited return of I used to work on the deep web. Now, although this deals with the same protagonist, Ryan, and talks about um, the person he worked for, Matt, I feel that what went before was a self-contained story, so I'm not going to add all subsequent parts on and make one giant video. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, please go and watch I Used to Work on the Deep Web. You might have watched it, it's one of my most popular videos, a quarter of a million views and counting. But this is going to be like a rebirth, a new beginning. Having said that, I'm leading off with the end part of the last story as a kind of a prologue to this video. So we're going to be looking at Matt's story to begin with, and then we're kicking off with the all new adventures of I used to work on the deep web. And I guess I still do. Are you ready, my dear friends? Good. Well, it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink. And once again, listen. Hey, everyone. Well, I think you're all due some explanation. I escaped from my protective custody a week ago, enabling me to continue posting in order to get the truth out. Over the past few years, I've been working on the means to escape my situation. This means both the police and whoever I'm pissing off by uploading, well, they're both after me. Luckily, I know what I'm doing. I spent a good while on the deep web doing jobs for different people after my gig with Matt ended. Some of those things are unsavory, and in doing that kind of work, I gained a rather unique skill set. That, combined with my relative wealth from my time on the deep web, <laughs> let's just say I'll be fine. Trust me. Now, I know the last part was marked as the finale, but well, I still have more to tell. But before I can tell any more, I have to share something with you all. Matt's last eulogy. To whom this may concern, you may know me under many names. I'm an investigative journalist who works for an organization on the deep web. My job is to find news that the normal media will not cover and carry out investigations authorities and governments can't or won't. This job is inherently dangerous, so... My death should not come as a surprise. I got this job after getting my degree in international law. Well, I tried normal jobs in law and journalism, but I noticed the censorship nearly immediately. I wanted to do something about it, as did many others on the deep web. I voiced a few cases I couldn't in my jobs, and eventually my current employer found me. I've committed countless crimes to expose cases and, in some circumstances, use methods I disdain and regret. I've seen things that are indescribable and reported things that cause true horror. The people I've had under my hire are all good people. People who work hard and ask no questions. Any involvement they have in any of my cases is purely the cause of my investigations. With my death. They will be paid duly to hold any and all work related to any of these cases. Now, please do not escalate any vendetta against me towards my sources and employees. Now, with that said, all cases I've worked on will be released. Criminals of any form will be exposed and my legacy will not die with me. I will not be missed, but my work will. There are many more like me and you can't stop us. You will be exposed regardless of your title, status or situation. We have taken down corrupt governments, gangs, murderers, the list goes on. Now, finally, to those I count my friends. Don't mourn my loss. Don't continue any of my cases. But continue my legacy. Find peace in exposing the criminals I can't. My killers were likely one of my prior or current cases, so please, for your sake, do not investigate them. Only expose new people and organizations. I have died, but do not let me have died in vain. I may have left some of you with unsolved cases. Well, upload them. Do not investigate them yourself, as one of them may be the reason for my demise. <sighs> 
Good luck and Godspeed. So, that's it guys. I'm a fugitive now. Matt is dead. This isn't the end though. I'll continue Matt's legacy as he asked, as I promised I would. Hopefully re-releasing all this to the internet will get the right people put behind bars for the drug ring and murders in my town. But, well, that's only one case. I promise to re-upload all of Matt's unfinished cases, and I will. I'm also going to try and find who killed Matt. And I'll be bringing you guys along for the journey. I have some closure on this case now, and I think I can confidently move on from it and continue my work for Matt even after death. And please, for all of your sakes, don't dig more into this case, or any cases I'll post. Someone who Matt exposed killed him. Although, I'm still not entirely sure he's dead. Could he just be laying low? Oh, I'm not sure. And for those of you wondering, my work on the deep web did not end with Matt either. I still owe Jacob work after Matt's demise. I went on to work for many people over the next few years, completing many jobs. You guys seem to like these posts, so please, if there's a specific job you guys want me to cover, ask in the comments. I've done pretty much everything there is to do bar the properly extreme stuff. Well, I'm no murderer. And with myself being pursued by both the police and the people exposed by mine and Matt's work, I have to keep you guys updated. I plan to take a plane to another country to escape my pursuers and law enforcement. By the time this is uploaded, I should already have arrived. I have various safe houses set up in my destined location, and I have a lot of work to do whilst I'm there. I thought I could be rid of the deep web for good, but apparently not. Oh, and as for my final paycheck from Matt, well, I can't go into details, as the money is more easily traced due to the amount, which had six figures in the pound section. So, yeah, I just hope I don't meet the same fate as Matt, but I've made a lot of enemies on the deep web, and even more by posting my work publicly. I've taken a big risk by exposing my work to everyone here. I just hope you guys appreciate the inherent risk in doing so. In a few days... I'll begin releasing the case files and logging my investigation. I'll see you guys there. Now, I said in my last post that I might finally be able to get some rest. But I'm dipping my toes back into the deep web, and the chances are I'm going to get pulled back in. So, I'll see you guys soon. Until I post again. Time for even more restless nights of no sleep. Hey everyone, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's Ryan again, back at it. So, before I talk about what I'm doing right now, I think I need to cover why I've been away so long. It's quite a story, but I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. It's got all the intrigue of a Hollywood movie, Guns, drugs, and beautiful women. Well, except without the beautiful women. <laughs> now, I know the last part was supposedly the finale, and I genuinely thought it would be. The way I saw it, I was stuck exactly where I was. But it turns out I don't give up very easily. So strap in and get ready for more tales from the deep web. After coming clean to the police, I was under heavy witness protection. While I was sheltered, I didn't manage to learn much, but I didn't know I had to disappear, and quickly. Turns out, telling the whole of Reddit about my findings got me a lot of attention. I'd count myself lucky that the police intervened, but their presence wasn't exactly good for me either. I had to get away from the feds and into hiding. Luckily, I had the best tool there is for doing so, the deep web. Matt's last paycheck to me was substantial enough to set me up with a few items that I needed, some of which were, well, 
very niche. Before you ask, yes, the police were watching my internet traffic, but they aren't smart enough to track my every move, and coffee shops are apparently out of their jurisdiction. I think I went to Starbucks for the internet so often, one of the baristas thought I was homeless. I'll take that in my stride, though, because it meant she paid for my coffee from time to time. <laughs> Strange to think the last coffee shop I went to was with Jacob before bugging that farmhouse. Well, I spent quite a bit of time and money getting something quite unique. Exact copies of my teeth. Now, you may think, what the hell do I need that for? Well, the answer is, I needed to fake my death. And for the authorities to truly think me dead, I needed evidence. There was already a motive for my murder. I just needed a method. And this method was quite grim. I also took the liberty of purchasing a vat of acid and a full human skeleton. I probably shouldn't have found it funny, but the fact the skeleton arrived bit by bit reminded me of those mail-order airfix kits you get. After about two months of procedural construction, I had my dead body nicely set up. The next step was to get a fall guy. Now, this one was slightly harder, but also easier than I'd expected. Turns out there are people that actually want to go to prison guess it's for smuggling and stuff. Maybe gang rep. Either way, I found some neo-Nazi skinhead called Marco that was more than happy to go down for murder. I wouldn't call him a psycho, but he wasn't exactly an average Joe. He came pre-prepared with a murder weapon, and we set up my house for a break-in. He had my fake remains in the vat at his hideout and would leave significant trace through DNA and traffic cams leading to his den. As time ticked closer to my staged death, multiple things played on my mind. I'd be off the grid. I'd be legally dead. Some people spend thousands to get off the grid, and I'd done it for a pittance, comparably. The most costly bit was the teeth. Turns out you can really get anything on the deep web. I also thought about my family. As far as they'd know, I'd really be dead. Yeah, that kind of played at me. Admittedly, when I left home, it was with a bitter taste in everyone's mouth. But they were still family. But I dedicated too much to back out now. Besides, I feel like Marco would actually murder me if I backed out at this point. I'm going to skip over the specifics of the day because if I detail them and the police pay too much attention to this post, they can act on it. If I keep it vague, it's just speculation, and some fan who got a hold of my account. Note to self, posting on Reddit really does make staying dead harder. Now, after reading that, you're probably wondering why I'm posting any of this at all. And the reason is, I got paid to tell the truth to expose crime and point a finger at the guilty. And I'd feel like I'd done Matt wrong if I took his last paycheck without carrying on his legacy. That, and I use a friend's account to post this stuff. Again, gonna keep their identity private, but they've been letting me use their account since day one, which makes everything I post subject to speculation and makes everything I say here, hearsay. Back to my death. Long story short, after I failed to meet my witness protection officer, my house was searched and I was declared missing. My body and murderer were found the same day. <laughs> nice to know the police cared enough to prioritize finding me. I was officially declared dead the next day. My funeral was a few weeks later. I attended, <laughs> obviously not in the congregation, but I got a good view. Yeah, watching your own funeral is the weirdest goddamn thing you can ever imagine. It actually brought a tear to my eye. I felt like I'd actually died. But a few days after came a different feeling. Ultimate freedom. However, 
I had a setback. I couldn't go home, and every legal asset I had was closed. But obviously I kept Matt's last paycheck nicely out of reach. How, you may ask? Cold, hard, gold. Before dying, I'd set up an in-person sale of one bar to a rather shady individual. Everyone I knew called him the fencer, and he wasn't a swordsman. The meat was set in an inconspicuous bus stop. One of his people would get off, we'd transfer at the stop, I'd get on the next bus, he'd walk away. The transfer went perfectly, and I walked away with a sizable amount of untraceable bills. I skipped town, found a shared house with a free room. Rent was £400 a month, which was more than affordable. Best bit was, a landlord didn't ask any questions when I handed over 12 months advance instead of my ID. Once I was nicely set up, I had to get going on the next few steps. A new identity. Getting a fake ID was easy, but getting a good fake passport and ID was significantly more costly. Sure enough, though, I managed to track down a good seller, and after a sizable payment, I officially became a new man. The best bit was, my new first name was actually Ryan. I was officially a new man, the old me dead and buried, the police having wrapped up the case, and those who pursued me satisfied I was now dead. Yes, now the real work would begin. Matt didn't just leave behind a generous amount of money. He left behind a lot of questions. And I'm not the only one he left a message to. It looked like a lot of us were going to have our work cut out finding out exactly what happened to him. The only problem I had was that I had no idea who he really was or where he lived. All I had was a name and a continent and a fuck ton of untraceable money. It seemed to me like it was time to investigate the investigator. So, that settles my little hiatus. I'm just glad things went smoothly. And, just as a heads up, the next few parts of my story are going to be pretty intense compared to the previous parts, and more lengthy than this. I'm also going to be releasing more stories of other work I've completed on the deep web. While my work related to Matt is my most prevalent, it's not all I did. I'm also going to be looking into some of Matt's incomplete cases. I'll be doing a separate series on these called The Deep Web Case Files. Sounds pretty cool, right? I'll be releasing the first case file and side story around the same time as this goes up. They're both going to have a bit of a photography theme. Until then, I've got writing to do. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to get no sleep. Hey everyone, it's your boy Ryan, back at it again. So, this time I'm derailing from my Matt-centric content and focusing on one of the side jobs I did before the events of the previous part. I'm going to be talking about a little job Jacob set up for me. I hope you guys enjoy. A while after going public with my previous findings, Jacob got in contact with me again. Apparently one of his clients needed photographs of something, and I was much closer than him to the subject. All he asked was I go to a certain place at a certain time and take some photos. Now, I had more than enough money to need the pay he was offering, but I did feel like I owed him a favour. I agreed, and he sent me the information on the subject. Apparently, I would be following some guy whose wife thought he was cheating. It didn't seem too hard to do, but it did seem like it would be quite boring. He'd arrive at my town's train station at 7am sharp and make his way to work. I was to record him from the station to his office complex and from his office complex back to the station. Seemed pretty simple, right? I set off to the station on Monday morning. I sat and waited for his train to arrive. And you guessed it, in a coffee shop. Sure enough, it pulled in at 7am sharp. 
I watched the crowd carefully, already recording. I was looking for a black male, skinny build, clean shaven with slick back hair. I spotted him tailing the crowd and began to follow him. He walked all the way to a small law firm in the town centre. I waited outside for a little while before noticing a fast food joint across the street. I situated myself comfortably and chowed down on breakfast waffles. Surprisingly, the staff didn't seem to mind me just ordering tea refills and a burger at lunchtime. Apparently, the man had bought a packed lunch as he didn't leave the building. Time wore on to 3pm when the man left the building and I was beginning to doze, my mind in other places, when I noticed him. I promptly got up, thanking the cashier as I left. The man walked a block before turning into a pub. Apparently, he liked hitting the drinks early. I made my way in a short time after and got myself situated at a table. Food was being served, so I ordered a steak from the bar. I ate my meal a few tables away from him. My phone propped up and recording him. He seemed to be talking with another man, perhaps a colleague. They made their exit about half an hour after entering. I couldn't hear their conversation, but they both had sullen looks on their faces. They walked together to an alleyway about a block down. I peeped my phone around the corner and filmed them. They opened a dumpster, spoke a bit, then left the way they came. I made myself look busy on my phone, and they walked past, unaware of my presence. They crossed the road before splitting up. The man I was following made his way promptly to the train station. Happy that the man was heading home, I made my way back to the alley. It was about 4.30pm by the time I got there. I opened up the dumpster they were looking in. I couldn't see anything at first, but after rummaging around for a bit, I found an elongated series of trash bags loosely covered with trash. They were all taped together. I was curious, so I ripped open the top of the bags. I saw feet. Human feet. Attached to human legs. I almost puked. After composing myself, I took a few pictures, recovered it, and got the hell out of there. I don't think I needed any more to do with what I'd found. I sent Jacob all the recordings to this reply. Oh, shit, that's fucked up, kid. Don't think too hard. I'll get sorted. You did a good job. I took that, as much in my stride as I could, and tried not to think too hard about what I'd seen. But there was no way I'd be able to just forget about it. When I went to bed that night, I knew what I was getting. No sleep. Well, my dear friends, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see where these stories are going to go. We are just getting started again on this series, and I'm already really intrigued about what's going to happen. So, are you going to join me again for the next part? Of course you are. Not sure when that will be, but very soon, I promise. Now, you go away, have a lovely weekend. I'll be back again with another story for you on Monday. Till then, sweet dreams, and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's vault. 
the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>